Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is John and I'm the founder of an indie game development company called Odyssey Games. Today, we're going to talk about the top free assets that you need to start making games. Now, I want to preface this with a little disclaimer. These aren't assets that are going to be able to work for your needs right out of the box. This is why it's important that you have a basic understanding of C Sharp programming. This basic understanding of C Sharp will help you customize these assets to fit the needs of your game. Now, with that said, let's jump right into it. So I have about 17 items that we're gonna talk about. And yes, that's an odd number, but I think all of these items should be within your own assets that you own and can pull out whenever you need them, right? That's the whole point of this. So the first one is the free 2D Mega Pack by Brackies. This is from all the tutorials he's done and it just includes a lot of characters, items, environments, all different types of things that you can need to start your own 2D game, right? So as you can see, it's pretty all encompassing. Again, it says it includes backgrounds, environments, animated characters, animated enemies, items, icons, weapons, tools, platforms, food and plants, UI, elements, effects, basic shapes, and it also links to the tutorials that go with this. Well, this is what they look like. All right, this is for if you want to do some crafting of materials, the dungeon crawler game, your 2D platform game. This is where you grow crops, Pong, you have your Mario type games, Pac-Man, survival. This is just what some of the games look like that these assets were used for. And you can follow the tutorials to make games like this and then turn it into something that makes it unique for yourself. So this is the Candice AI controller. All it is is a, uh, an AI framework that allows for object detection, uh, pathfinding, obstacle avoidance, uh, threading and cues for pathfinding and agent registration requests to minimize the overhead on main thread, uh, even offers object pooling for optimization. It's all based on behavior trees, finite state machines, and there are other aspects to this that it includes that are really beneficial, such as being able to follow targets, the head look features, and then looking at the demo scenes that it comes with, we can get an idea of just how this asset works. You have your traffic, allies, and enemies. And you can see how they avoid the obstacles. The enemy character here will start to chase you, as you can see. And obviously he stops at a certain distance, which is beneficial if you have AI that wants to shoot. So this is the next scene, and it just exemplifies the, uh, the line of sight radius and detection radius of the AI. You know, uh, within a certain radius it'll detect, within a certain range it'll attack, and then this just shows their field of view at that particular moment, right, along the blue axis, the Z axis. So then this is the AI controller script allows you to adjust the key mapping for specific attacks, the animations, uh, what kind of combat, melee or ranged, its movement, how it wants to do a pathfinding source. You can use either the Candice integrated system or use Unity Nav Mesh. Overall, this is good if you want to have AI that is able to be somewhat intelligent, follow you, attack you, and it it's free. The next asset is the Unity Particle Pack. This is just a free asset pack that gives you obviously free particle effects that you can use. So just a quick overview of the uh, particle pack that comes with Unity. As you can see, it has your flamethrowers, your fire, explosions. Coming across. You have your water leak, splashing, your rocket trail effect, dust storm, fog, black smoke. Your uh, 
your muzzle flashing, goop sprays, impact for different surfaces, your earth shatter effect. This is the ice lance effect. And back across, you have your fireflies, candle effects, sparks, heat distortion, dissolving, and teleporting. So as you can see, this is useful for just about any 3D game you're gonna wanna make, especially if you're not using some sort of stylized graphics and you wanna have that realistic look to it. So looking at your first person all in one, this is just an open source first person controller and it gives you a dynamic footstep, sound effects, head bobbing, a built-in stamina system, automatic reticle generation, and it's something that is continuously updated, which is always good with an asset pack. But you can see it's customizable. You can adjust the head bob, the sprint and walk speeds, the rotation and mouse sensitivity. And it really provides a good first step if you want to get into your first person controllers. This is the demo that comes with it. And it just shows you what you can use. You see you have your reticle your move, your run, the bottom white is your stamina. You can have jump. Definitely need to adjust the mouse sensitivity. You can see it comes with the uh, different setups for the camera, uh, the mouse sensitivity, which I found to be kind of high. There's definitely one of them. Can you enable camera shake, hide the cursor, and auto crosshair, it allows you to change your crosshairs. Granted, it looks like it only comes with just that one specific crosshair. It's still a good starting point. And you can see it's easy to add on to this just by adding, you know, your health bar, being able to pick up things, arms, a body. So it's not hard to add, you know, a child to this to have the body. Yeah, right now I have the cursor shown, but it's definitely easier to move. It has set up for the open doors, which is good because you can use that to animate other doors in your game. The next asset is from a uh, speed tutor. It's the full menu system and it's free and it just includes so much. It's fantastic, right? So you can see it offers the ability to load games, save games, customize your options, your background to create a menu because everything here can be changed. So if you look at what it includes, it shows that it has a basic saving and loading via player preferences, fully customizable UI with sound effects included. There also is a tutorial, I believe it's on his YouTube that goes over this. And now going into it, we can take a look at it. So you can see it has new game, load game, options, exit. Allows you to adjust the graphics, your sounds. It's nothing for gameplay, but you can load a game, create a new game. And then if we back out of it and look at the uh, actual controller for the menu, you can see exactly what it is that you can adjust. It shows that you can just drag and drop your own canvases and menu bars into this so you can adjust it. Coming into the canvas, you can take a look around just what they have here, right? Their top logo. You can switch that with your logo, a game logo. Or you can delete it. If you uh, unpack the prefab, there's your lower text. It tells you the version and this, his website. Again, that's great if you want to include your version of your game that you made. All right, your prompts. I don't need those. Do you need those? And this allows you to adjust the background, which is this, uh, this nice mountain with a bird. I don't know what kind of bird, but you can put anything you want there. There's not much that I have right here, but it's easy to just swap it in and out to make it however you want to look. So the next asset to look at is a procedural level generator. What this does is it allows you to input your own prefabs and it'll take those prefabs and randomly generate different maps. You, know, you create dungeons, mazes, 
whatever you want to use for it. And this is super helpful as you start building bigger worlds and you don't want to sit there and create every part by hand. And as you can see in the description, it says it's a small framework to create levels by using connectable sections. It can be used to create 3D and 2D levels, good for most types of games, such as platformers, roguelites, and first person shooters. And if we go into the actual game itself to go look at it, as you can see, there's not much in the demo scene. All it is is the one level generator script. This is where you can put your prefabs for creating your different levels. So if you go into your sections, you can see that you can adjust how many you want, your corridors, your rooms, your spawn room and treasure room. What is a dead end? And you can add your rules to it, such as tags, treasures, and once you input this, it'll create its own level for you. Let's see if we can take a look at it. Whoop. So this is what it looks like, All right? The red are your doors or dead ends. Your blue are the corridors, the green are the rooms. So this is your spawn room, the yellow is your treasure room, and you can just see what it looks like and how it will change every time. So this is just a good way to make your prefabs, put it into the level generator, and it will create new levels for you. And this also works for mazes, first person shooters for cities and roadways. So the next one is the, the nav mesh cleaner. And what this does is when you bake your nav mesh, it will put the navigation material pretty much everywhere, including on places you can't get to. So this just allows you to select the different isolated nav meshes, such as on top of roofs, and cylinders you select them and it'll get rid of it so this also will help you with your optimization and just make your game perform better and not confuse your ai so as you can see this is what the game looks like with the default nav mesh and just baked it onto everything that's flat and what it considers walkable then you run the program it detects the isolated nav meshes and removes them so when we come into the demo, we can click on the nav mesh cleaner, look at the script, and there's not much to it, right? It just gives you the basics for how you want to set it up in order to clean specific areas. So when you go into your navigation, you bake your mesh, this is what you end up with. You know, you can see the path where you want the player to go, but then you also have it baking meshes onto areas where the characters and AI will just never get to. It's just a waste of space and it it's just one thing that you can do to help the optimization. So you go into the script, calculate, it automatically finds the areas where the isolated nav mesh is. When you go into navigation, you can see it covers exactly those spots. Click bake, and now it's gone. And there you go. So again, this is something that's useful as you get into larger levels and you start baking your nav mesh and it takes forever and the nav mesh determines that these characters can walk wherever they want, right? Even in places they'll never get to. We want to get rid of that so we can have a more optimized game. So the next asset we're going to look at is called Surge. It's a it's a, a tween tool, right? So what this particular one is, it's a collection of free tools that make development in Unity easier and more reliable. This allows you to animate anything with style and just one line of code. It implements uh, state machines, singletons, displays objects, a spline for powerful and elegant tools for visualizing a spline and moving objects along that path. So when we look at it, you have your tween, your state machines, your singletons for a simplified global access, streamlined solution development, and portable reusable tool creation at your fingertips. Your chooser, splines, collider buttons, and display object. Now, 
this is a lot easier to show than it is to explain. So looking at it, they have the different examples that you have to actually pay for, but the actual surge itself is free. And it has your car parts store, character customizer, enemy damage, a skull tower, space travel, tween uses, and weapon selecting. Each one of these just exemplifies each aspect that you can use the surge for. So when you wanna create a parts store, this allows you to add uh, superchargers, spoiler, you know, it deducts the money, it adds it on, it adds some shaking to the car. So this particular example, it allows you to create a store, right? You can assign money and assign how much each part cost, as well as the visuals that go with it, right? You can show your uh, spoiler, your supercharger, confirm, your car frame. And then the next one is your character customizer, which is similar to the car parts store, where you're able to modify your character. You can add on helmets, add a sword, different swords, Ooh, shoulder pad spiky and so you can see how useful this is when it comes to allowing the player to customize certain aspects of games and again now we go to the enemy damage now it shows it for a click to fire and what this does is animates the uh, the enemy right it adds the color to it and it shakes it and when you look at the logic for it it shows you the force of the bullets the mech bot where it takes the damage shows how long the injury animation will last for, what shakes, the intensity of it, and the color of when it gets hit. Moving on to Skull Tower. So this one allows you to select different levels and rotate them independently, which I find you could probably make a game just out of this alone. Some sort of uh, tower Rubik's Cube kind of thing. And this is using a state machine where you can adjust the state of uh, skull one, two, and three. This one is space travel. This should be the spline, where you can uh, create a spline in 3D space and integrate that into a uh, character movement to follow. You can see the script for it, adjusting it. If you take a better look at it, it just allows you to set anchors for it and you adjust the anchors. Right. So that's all that is. It's just an easy way to implement it without having to program it yourself or script it yourself. Then when we look at the tween uses, this is for moving this little robot. You know, you can move them up, move them down, right, left, back, forward. Wobble, shake, change your lens colors, wind up, spin, and it, it's just a way to move your game objects around in an easy way. So if we look at the logic, all right, this is your, your script. This lets you select the lens, the wobble, the colors you want it to cycle through, your wind up amount, how long you'll take. So then the next one is the uh, weapon select, right? So it lets you select your handgun, a four shot, and an arm shot. So what this script is letting you do is select your different weapons. So if you wanna have a menu in the beginning where you select your player's weapons, this is what you can use. And again, nothing about Surge is advanced or something you can't do. The whole purpose of it is just to save you a little bit of time when it comes to programming your games. So the next one is a uh, Polarith AI. Uh, this is free, but they do have a paid version as well. So what this does is it allows uh, navigation of AI in a 3D space. Uh, with this, you get easy one-click setup, 20 combinable behaviors, active and passive collision avoidance, local decision making, line and circle sensors, so you can use it in a 2D or 3D environment. 
and you can see it integrates in with uh, Unity's nav mesh. You can create customizable paths and patrol points. So now we're looking at the demo scenes. It definitely includes quite a bit and it just shows you some of the uses that you can use with the, uh, it just shows you what you can use this AI for. You can see that the vehicles are automatically coming to a stop and going around the roundabout. And from there, it will decide where it wants to go. You can see here if they're gonna do some sort of collision avoidance, which he did, he stopped for a little bit. So this is a tiny wood example where the character is searching for tagged objects, such as a pumpkin, mushrooms. So these objects is tagged as being significant. And if they're within his search radius, he will automatically go to them and pick them up. And while he's doing that, he's also avoiding different obstacles. As you can see, he just walked around the tree to go get these mushrooms. So then when you go to your objects, you can uh, tag them as being a uh, avoidable, which you can also do that with uh, Unity's nav mesh. So this is a 2D version where they're just a school of fish wandering around and avoiding the red fish. So the next asset is a acid usage detector. This helps you find uh, assets that are used and uh, objects in your Unity project. So the next asset is the asset usage detector. This is free. This allows you to uh, search for particular game objects and assets and see where they're being used. So when you look at the, the image within the asset store, you can see that it's looking for Arca plan and cube. It's looking in the asset folders and currently open loaded scenes and scenes in the build settings. So once you click go, it's going to find where these assets are referenced. So the next asset is the asset usage detector. Um, there's not much of a demo scene, so I'm not going to pull it up in Unity. So this allows you to search for assets and game objects within your asset folders. It'll tell you where they are, what kind of dependencies they have, and it's just a great way to understand whether or not you're actually using these game objects so you can delete them or keep them, as well as seeing if there are dependencies on some of these game objects that don't need to be there. It's just a way to, a good way to reduce bloating and have a good inventory of all the assets that you have. So the next asset we're gonna look at is called Easy FPS. And what this is, is just a first person shooter controller. It has some of the basic things you need to get started, a few sounds and some visual effects. You know, you have your muzzle flashes and like everything else that I've mentioned so far, it's a great baseline to start off of. So when you come look over at the script, you can see there's only a few scripts that go with this. You have your player movement, your mouse look and your gun inventory. And this is what's going to uh, be the names of your guns, the sounds, your blood particle effects, your movement speeds. And then you can look at the prefabs that go with it for your bullets. You can see how far they can go, the decal that goes with it, the blood effect particles. And then when we go into actually playing it, you can see you have two guns. You can, you can jump, crouch, uh, do a melee attack. You look down the sights, you have your automatic gun and a sniper. And then with that, you also have your recoil, reloading animations. There's a lot that's already included in this package, especially with it being for free. shouldn't have any issues making a first person shooter with this asset alone. So this is the item and inventory system. It allows you to have 
a skill tree, a currency system, an inventories, crafting, pretty much everything you need to get started with your games that you're making. And looking at the pictures in the description, you can see the skills, your inventory, there's money on the ground, rocks and trees that you can mine. From there, you can get materials to craft things. It allows you to set up your items, create items, set the descriptions, what their price is, what category they fall into. It allows you to set notifications for your crafting and vendors. So like if you sold an item, there will be a pop-up that says, hey, you sold such and such item for this price. And again, it's all done by visual scripting. So if you're not keen on coding, this is a great asset for you to use. Looking at some of the features, you can see, you know, has your organized project, intuitive editor, visual scripting, a stat system, saving and loading, multiple inventories and windows, animated windows, currency system, vendor system gathering resources, crafting skills, item property generators. It's, it's a good tool. So if we look at the demo scene that comes with it, I'll give you a better idea of what it comes with. You know, you can pick up your swords, shields, coins. You can teleport to different places. You have your inventory window, your item belt. So as you, as you can see, you have all the animations here for you. You have a banking system. So you click on the bank, put items into it, and it'll save it for you. And this is also a, a very cool one. You have your water feature and swimming animations. It gives you the statistics of the weapons. You can mine the tree to get wood. Pick it up, it goes right into the inventory. You can craft things. Overall, it's really easy to use and it's just another something that you can incorporate. So now we're gonna look at the easy file save by Tiger Forge, and this is a just a a, a quick way to integrate a saving and loading of data in your game. This also integrates well with a, that full menu system by Speed Tutor. So when you look at the description, it gives you a little more detail on how it works, the supported data types that you can encrypt it, uh, back it up, and it tells you where it saves it as well. So when you come up here and you cycle through the pictures that come with it, you can see it gives you a, a quick how-to on how to use it. And it tells you how to write it, how it reads it. So you can see when you come into the Unity, you go into the game, press play. It, it gives you some instructions to see it work. Right, so right off the bat it says, hello, I'm ready. So let's press S to save some data. So the data that you're saving, your name, nickname, age, some of the stats, if it has a sword, if you have a bow, where you're gonna spawn at, your scale, your rotation, your position, the different skills that you could have, equipment you have, how much currency you have. It's pretty much just tells you that you can save just about any information you're gonna need. So now we load the data. So it pulls the data that's saved on the computer and it pulls up all the information that was saved. And then you can add information to it, such as you added a nickname. So, well, what's the nickname? The warrior. All right, let's delete it. Now we deleted it. So as you can see, the easy file save asset is it's just that all it does is just saves and loads the information and it saves it locally on the computer. 
So if you want something that's a little more secure, there's other options out there. But as a, a free asset, this is a great way to do it, especially if you're not doing anything multiplayer or if you don't care if the person finds the save file and alters it to their benefit. This is a great way to go. So this is the last of the RPG related assets that we're going to go over. And this is the RPG character mech anim animation pack free. This is one of the free versions that also has a, a paid version that you can get. And it's a little more all encompassing. So this asset contains 93 animations and now you can use it as is, or you can integrate it into your characters that you already have made. All right, so this is the scene that it comes in. Take a look around. It's a small scene, but all you're, all you're really getting for this is the actual animations. I mean, it does have a movement controller, but I wouldn't say this is the best uh, third person controller out there. I think uh, I'm gonna show a better one after this. So pretty much you're not getting this asset for the player controller or anything like that. So I'm not gonna go into that part. What you're gonna get here are the animations that go with this. So you have your, your different idols, unarmed idol, unarmed movement, unarmed attacks. And then this is with you with a two hand sword. You have your switching, damage blocking attacks. So the different attacks you have, you're able to kick. So this pretty much just allows you to get all your animations without having to go through Mixamo or anything like that. This is your one stop shop for all the animations you could use with uh, an RPG in terms of having a two handed sword or being unarmed and taking damage, fighting, blocking. That's why you're getting this asset. You're getting it for the animations. You're not getting it for the controller. If you want a third person controller, a good free one is the Invector third person controller. And that's this particular controller. Um, this is one I use all the time. I actually bought the, the shooter version of it. A very powerful tool that I found was worth it. But the, the free one is just as good. You're able to do a lot. You're very nimble. You have excellent control of your characters. And when we go to take a look at it, so this is the third person controller for Invector. Uh, it's just a very well rounded out asset, really. It allows your character to have a precise control of their movements. In terms of basic locomotion, this is probably the asset you're gonna wanna get. Just looking at uh, some of the scripts that come with it, it's very well documented and easy to configure. You know, you have your controller, your input managers, you have a camera controller for your third person camera. If you needed a third person controller, this is probably the one I personally recommend. And if you're gonna buy one, I recommend buying this one as well. Finishing off with the first person shooter controllers. If you're gonna do a low poly first person shooter, this is probably the best one to get. It has everything you need in terms of a first person shooter controller. It contains your weapons, your animated arms, different animations for reloading, having knives, weapon icons, uh, visual effects. You know, it gives you, uh, it gives you the AK and a Glock as a models to use. You have a knife, different firing effects, explosions. You can aim down sight, throw grenades. It has recoil. It's just a very good first person shooter controller. So let's look at the demo because the demo is a lot of fun. <laughs> so it has some physics based on uh, explosions.
control your speed and do slow down effects. So you can look at your automatic gun script, set your weapon name, uh, bullet and mag mesh renderer, muzzle flashes. I mean, this is this is just amazing for a free asset. You know, you have your control movement, your speed, look settings. I mean, if you need a first-person shooter controller, this is the one to get, really. So the final one I wanted to mention is the uh, tutorial scripts by Speed Tutor. It's there is no demo scene, but he includes a bunch of scripts that can definitely help you out in a in a pinch. You know, it has a 2D damage controller, 2D moving levels, flashlight controller, first person shooter ray cast, UI appear on trigger, mine exploding, lock in the mouse, moving scenes, and button press. Neon Sphere scripts, plane animations, programming, post-processing, saving player prefs, having a countdown, having a pause menu, being able to slow down and have uh, slow motion effects, a splash screen fade. I mean, it's a bunch of scripts and it's definitely worth just importing into your project so you can have them if you need them. I think I covered some good free assets that you could use for your game. There are other assets out there that are more inclusive, but those are usually ones you have to pay for. If this is the type of material you like, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I put out videos every week relating to running an indie game development company. I'll see you next week.